So in today's video, we're gonna learn how to make one of these prints. Before we even get started with printmaking, there's a few things every beginner should start working with and should start amassing in their studio. The very first thing that I recommended in the first was using traditional battleship linoleum. There's benefits to it, like being cheaper, but in reality, when you're starting off, it might be a little bit too hard to carve. So I recommend that you start with a speedable, speedy carve. The benefit of this material is that it's very similar to the consistency of an eraser. Alternatively, you could also use these tiny erasers, even a pink eraser would be a good air little material to carve with. Of course, you're limited in the size, but they're a good option. Second thing that we're going to need is going to be a cutter, a linoleum cutter. And once again, I personally recommend Speedball because I really think they do create their products with printmakers in mind. What I like about this product is that it comes, you can probably hear that, it comes with some blades in here and you can actually interchange those blades when you are cutting. So that's very useful when you're starting off and means that you don't have to buy a huge set of different cutting tools. Next thing is going to be, of course, a brayer or a roller. Once again, um, I recommend the Speedwell one because it is a soft rubber and it is sturdy enough to like retain the ink, but it's also not hard enough to where like it's not gonna hold it. So really, really recommend it. Once you have those things, you're also gonna need an ink. So for the ink, I recommend water soluble Ink. This is great for beginners because you can clean it up with soap and waters and it means that you don't really have to get like a solvent involved or some sort of chemical like I work from home and I try to stay away as far as I can from all of those things. Next thing that I recommend is just getting a ginormous pad of transfer sheets like just little tracing papers. We're only going to need a tiny little sheet of paper. And speaking of paper, then when it comes to printmaking paper, there's it's such a wide variety of it, and there will eventually be a video on paper itself. But paper, you can really start with whatever paper you would have at home. And the next thing that I totally recommend using um, is gonna be a glass plate from home. I use this to roll my ink. I always recommend getting a glass surface if you can. Um, you can also probably buy one of these, it's called a bench hook, and this is, serves as a double purpose. You can actually set this on your table like so, and just kind of holding it right here, and you place your block right here as you carve. The idea is that, you know, your block won't go places. And you can also flip it and then apply the ink here, and then, of course, um, roll your ink. Next is going to be a pencil. Any pencil will really do. I like working with black wing pencils uh, just because they're really nice and dark, um, but really any soft dark pencil, dark pencil will do. Then there is of course a spoon, and I really mean this. You could alternatively go and get yourself one of these babies, which is a Baron. Um, however, if you're just starting off, this is not necessary. You can probably catch this later on. But to start off, a regular spoon is more than enough. So now that we know the tools that we're gonna need for printmaking, let's get started with step one. The very first thing that I like to do is start with a preset design. When you're starting, it's better that you have a simple design that you know you can actually carve before you move into something more complex. What we are gonna do is we're gonna take a sheet of tracing paper and we're gonna place it directly on top of our design. With our pencil, we're gonna simply just outline the entire image. You wanna make sure that you're pressing nice and hard. You wanna make sure you put plenty of graphite there. Once you have finished doing your tracing, you can put aside your reference drawing and you're simply going to take your sheet of transfer paper, flip it so that the graphite is facing down, and then you're gonna press that graphite down. I like to use the handle of my linoleum cutter because it literally has like a rounded shape that helps with that. Once that is transferred, I like to just go over with my pencil one more time to make sure all the lines are nice and crisp. At this point, I can begin carving. I like to start cutting all the extra edges that I don't need. For that, I utilize the knife tool right here that comes with a built-in speedable cutter. I like to cut all the other areas that I know I'm not gonna carve and that they're just kind of taking space up there. It also helps me have a really nice tight print. 
So when I ink it up, I don't get those areas just kind of inked up for no reason. I like cutting very close to my design, but not too close to where I accidentally cut something off. I simply just take the knife and slice it, and then as you can see, it just comes right off. At that point, I like to switch to a larger V gouge. I like starting with a larger V gouge because I can cut more. Speaking of cutting, make sure that you never cut in the direction of your fingers. These are sharp tools and you wanna avoid getting cut. When I cut, I don't dig down, but I dig on an angle. I don't wanna feel like my linoleum cutter is getting stuck. You just really just want it to glide nice and smooth. And as you can see, I just kind of start just cleaning that area and then I go on to the next part. I want to make sure that I leave a little bit of space between the actual dark line and uh, the block, just in case there's like an accident. At that point, I can just simply switch it up and start cutting all the angled areas. If there's a part where I need to turn my tool, I, what I like to do is that I like to rotate my block always making sure that my hands are not in the way of the blade. I'm telling you from experience, those little suckers can actually hurt. Once you get the large areas carved out out of your Monstera leaf, I like to go in with a smaller gouge, this time with a one millimeter gouge, and then I just simply cut those outlines in there. At this point, I just cut the last little pieces that I know I don't want to be on my final design and I clean it up a bit. Once we have our whole image carved, you'll really get a sense of how this block is going to be. One of the things you always wanna make sure is that there isn't any kind of clumps of the material left there because when it, that gets inked up, you're gonna notice it on your print. Speaking of printing, we're gonna be utilizing the Speedable Water Soluble Ink and we're also gonna be using a four inch rubber brayer. Next, I like to take my glass plate just because I love working with glass, it's so easy to clean. I'm gonna make a reservoir on top of my ink plate, just a reservoir, I mean that little dab of ink, then grab it in my brayer, I'm just gonna dab it just about that and then start pulling down with my brayer. When you pull the brayer and you're trying to cover it with ink, you want to avoid doing this, going up and down. You want to make sure that you come down, lift it up, and allow the brayer to rotate. We want to make sure that all that ink is nicely and evenly distributed on our brayer. Otherwise, you'll get patchy areas when you roll your ink. Once I feel that ink is ready to be applied to my block, make sure one more time that it's nice and clean, no little clumps in there, because I don't want those to come through. And I applied my first layer of ink. At this point, I can really tell whether or not my block is looking the way I want it. And I then simply just start applying several thin layers of ink to make sure that the entire block is evenly coated. Particularly on the first print, you'll always find that the block doesn't print as well just because it's the first time your block is receiving the ink. In order to make sure that my print is nice and aligned in the center, I'm going to use another sheet of paper the same size of the paper I'm printing, and I'm gonna place my block in the middle. Then, utilizing the edges of that piece of paper, I'm just gonna use it to align it nice and tight. At that point, I'm gonna bring in my wooden spoon, and I'm simply going to rub or burnish my piece of paper like in small circular motions. Eventually, you'll see the outline of your block. At that point, you can actually pull the print. Look at that. As you can tell, this print right here needed a little bit more ink, but at the same time, because it didn't have a lot of ink, we're able to see the texture of the paper. So the thing with printmaking, you can work those variations right there and you can try to get different ways of expressing your print, even though it's the same block, just depending on how much ink and pressure you're applying. For this one, we're gonna do a different technique. We're gonna grab our block and place it face down on our paper. You kinda gotta eyeball where the center is. Then with our hand, we're just simply going to apply some pressure and press down. Give it a good, nice press. At that point, you can remove your block and we can tell right here that that is a nicer and more crisp print right there. 
When we put them side by side, you can see the differences of how both of these printing techniques have on our final results. One of them's a little bit more crisper. I can tell here in the top that I probably needed a little bit more pressure in there, but we had a very nice crisp outline all the way overall in our print, which is something that I really, really, really like. On this one, we're able to see that we needed a little bit more ink, but we're also seeing more of the texture of the paper. So those are two things that you can always consider and play around as you start working with your prints. At this point, we really have to clean up. And the thing that I love about this water soluble ink is that you can simply spray some soapy water and honestly, you would be ready to go and clean it up. I just apply the soapy water directly to my soil surfaces and with a paper towel, just make sure that everything is nice and clean. And honestly, that's that, you're ready to go. So as you could see, starting a print from beginning to end is really not that intimidating at all. So hopefully now you know exactly what to do to create your very own prints. On the next video, we're gonna be talking about other tools that are super useful to have in our printmaking studio. And we're gonna be diving into a little bit more advanced techniques. And if you found any value in this video, you know exactly what to do. See you next time.